Tony, uh, what do you mean kids aren't taught about mental health? Well, Dr. Phil, uh, talking by myself, being raised in a Latino family, if you don't see the problem, it's not existent. It only is a problem after all the consequences. So growing up with a stigma, it's, it's, people look down at you, basically. So it's hard. Yeah, well, there, there is a stigma, and there's not, there's nothing in the school curriculums that really addresses this. We talk about a lot of other things, but we don't talk about this much. Uh, Jessica, do you talk about this at home? Do you talk about it with your parents? I do not talk about this, Dr. Phil, with my parents. Growing up, I was always told that anxiety is something you choose, and depression is something that you can just overcome. It's definitely, there's so much taboo, especially in Hispanic households and a lot of other cultural households. You don't have that safe place to talk with older family members and you internalize it and you're not, you tell yourself, there are other people that have it worse than I do. So why do I have the ability to say my feelings when there are people that are homeless, people that have no food, that have no shelter, and you downplay your own feelings? Mm -hmm. Boy, you just summed up the problem. I mean, you did. You just summed up the problem. God bless you for, for describing it so well. That is exactly the reason that so many people don't talk about it. Stigma, it's not that bad. People have it worse than I do. Why should I be entitled to talk about this? Because everybody needs to. Look, I don't care how bad you think you have it or how yours is trivial as opposed to others. You deserve the right to talk about this. Look, anxiety is not a choice. It's not like you go down the cafeteria line and say, um, I'll have some cheesecake, some anxiety. <laughs> uh, so it, wouldn't it be that easy? You would just unchoose it, right? Yeah, it's definitely something that um, growing up, I'm the oldest of three in my first generation household. And so having to navigate, especially being in America, having my parents that haven't gone through college, navigating the college process, navigating job, finding jobs and whatnot, it's definitely overwhelming. And having those feelings, it's not something that I can just go to someone to talk about. It's something that I've always internalized and just grew up to accept. Well, here's the good news. It is manageable. It's not something you choose. You can't flip a switch and turn it on or off, but it is manageable. There are things you can do to manage it, unlike some other diseases. The, the, there are things you can do to cope with it, you, there are things you can do to manage it. There are things you can do to make it where it is not a factor in your functioning. But you have to be active and you have to do it. And the, it begins with giving your feelings a voice. And you know that. I was watching you when I was talking to her. You, you understand. And I think you see the power of giving your feelings a voice. Exactly. And there are a lot of nonprofits that I've tried to be a part of, a lot of clubs, getting myself active in like in a beautiful, positive community such as swim and rowing and surrounding myself with people that want to get better, that know that this is something that's not a choice. It's something that you deal with. And there are resources out there. But unfortunately, a lot of people aren't as fortunate as I am and they don't have those resources, have those places to go to, have those people to talk to. And spreading the word is definitely the biggest step into being part of the solution surrounding the stigma surrounding mental health. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.